Welcome back, everybody, to the Houston Texans Madden 21 franchise rebuild. Here to kick off the weekend as we get into the 2022 season. I really enjoyed the offseason last episode, and we had to make some tough decisions, but I think we made choices that will help us in the future instead of continuing to hurt the financial situation on this team. I wanted to keep Will Fuller, and I thought I would when I started the series have Will Fuller long term. I wanted to keep J.J. Watt, but it just didn't work. We had to worry about building this team up without some key players just because the salary cap really limited us. Had to get creative, and we still have things that are going to be a challenge going into the future when you look at like Zach Cunningham's contract, Bernard Rick McKinney's contract. We have Brandon Cooks on a big deal, but I think that's going to be ending soon. There are just a lot of things on this team that made this rebuild challenging from the beginning and different from rebuilds I have done. But the team is now becoming more of what I'm envisioning here, and that's had to change throughout the course of the first dozen episodes now. So you'll notice, Kendrick Bourne now on the team. I have added a veteran receiver. I chose Bourne over Antonio Brown, Randall Cobb, and many others because of one key rating, and that's the 85 catching. Antonio Brown's was in the 70s, Cobb's was lower. We're already looking at needing to develop young players at running back, tight end, wide receiver. So when it comes to which veterans I was going to add, it was all about stability. I don't want inconsistent rookies and veterans who are also going to be unreliable. I'm banking on the rookies making mistakes. But I need Zach Ertz and Kendrick Bourne to just catch the football. I don't need them to be pro bowlers, anything special, just... Get the job done on third and six. That's really all I ask of these two. So Zach Ertz comes in from Philadelphia. 86 catching for him. 85 for Kendrick Bourne. We're definitely, you know, weaker at receiver now. Minus Will Fuller. Minus Randall Cobb. So we're waiting to see what happens with Quincy Etienne and Chad Briggs. For Etienne, I look at his skill set. And really think you could go in any direction the best is probably slot and that's where I'll probably be developing him for the most part while Chad Briggs is more of hopefully a Brandon Cooks replacement he has the higher deep route running and release at 79 so let's start developing Quincy Etienne slot archetype I really wasn't able to add that big body physical receiver this offseason, but I think that at the very least, we're going to be using a lot more possession receivers. Cooks is now the only deep threat, and everybody else might have a chance to get downfield. And sure, Kendrick Bourne's archetype here is deep threat, but it's so clustered, I wouldn't really say he's a deep threat. He can make plays downfield but he's gonna be better out of the slot especially with 88 speed and 85 catching now i've also made adjustments to the playbook and that's going to be a process that uh, i just have to see play out and then make tweaks here and there but i've taken away some plays i didn't like the offense should be less vertical there will be more of Deshaun Watson running some option. I've added some plays from a couple pistol formations. I've made them more common, especially for our red zone play calling game plan. We should see Watson running a lot inside the 20. So I'm hoping that we start to see my vision for this offense come together. We will get to week one, but it's still going to be a process and we still have preseason to get through. As far as the defense goes, Looking forward to see what we can do with Kerry Borden and now the rookie Jabari Carr replacing J.J. Watt. I want to keep Borden as the nose tackle. He does have the best run-stopping ratings on the team at D-line. And then when we go to our pass rushing sub packages, it'll be Borden and Carr. We'll see what we can get though from Ross Blacklock and Charles Omenahu. I also want to make sure rookie Isaiah Fletcher gets on the field. We got really good value with him, and I want to make sure he develops as much as possible as a rookie. You want to do that anyway, but I think even more so when you have normal development and those XP requirements go up so quickly in their careers, 
you got to get the most out of those first two seasons. So he's also a focused player. These are the moves that I made, though, prior to getting to the preseason. I made some signings for undrafted free agents, but we don't have a lot of cap space. Also brought in veteran Kamalai Correa because we had to get some edge rush depth. I also added another rookie running back, undrafted Torian Hodge from Wake Forest. I want to have a very young backfield here, and I think that there are some intriguing players that I've seen in the draft classes so far. We have Bradham, of course. Hodge was undrafted. We did draft Enrique Freeman, and he does have some similar ratings here to Hodge, so we'll have to see who's able to separate there. Some ratings favor Hodge, some favor Freeman a little bit, but they can both catch the football and are kind of average athletes. Here are the results from the first preseason game. We lose to the Falcons by seven. Three touchdowns allowed to Josh Dobbs. And one score here for Al Dillard, the undrafted quarterback that I signed. Two interceptions in this game, 30 pass attempts, did not get much from Watson, but it's the first game, that's how it usually goes. Nobody able to run the football with these low-rated running backs. And then Chad Briggs, Isaiah Coulter, Kendrick Bourne making an impact here. And we'll see if any of this production in preseason can lead to some early playing time when the games start to count. Joe Jackson did get a sack in this game, Bernardrick McKinney as well, and a pick for Isaiah Fletcher. We like that. We also like O-line mentorship opportunities. Kalecio Semele, we signed him for the boost, and we're going to get a nice upgrade for Randy Wallace as well. Let's just go with pass blocking here. We still have overall a low rate of interior, so we're just going to worry about that. I can't remember his ratings off the top of my head, but they're all important here, and they're going to go up a little bit. For the focus players, right now we have Randy Wallace, Isaiah Fletcher, and Quincy Etn. I want to see Etn get a lot of snaps early on, so obviously I want to get him the XP. For Randy Wallace, center is just so important, and I want to put as much XP into him as possible. And then Fletcher, of course. Trying to make up for the lack of hidden development, so this is my way of basically saying this is basically star development now. You get extra experience here, even though I don't know if it really accounts for that much. We upgraded Quincy Etn earlier, and now we upgrade Chad Briggs, and I think we have an idea of the direction we're going with these two receivers. Now with Briggs, I think that there's two ratings to focus on, Deep Threat and Physical. Those physical ratings come in very clutch when you have to catch those 50-50 balls. And because I think that's just a little bit behind, and the numbers are obviously, we're going to go into physical here as he becomes a 70 overall wide receiver. And we get that all-important catch in traffic. More good news for the mentorship. Awareness is very important when it comes to offensive line, especially at center. They put a thing in the game a couple years ago where your O-line kind of has this awareness rating. I don't know how they really do it exactly, but I know that they're looking at the awareness of all five linemen, but more weight is given to the awareness of the center than anybody else. So that is nice. We have finished the preseason 2-2. Two and two. Let's check the stats. Al Dillard, four interceptions, three touchdowns. Who is Al Dillard? Here is the rookie from Oregon that I signed. He was one of the better undrafted free agents. He had good short accuracy and some speed here at 79. It's something at least. I'm looking for a decent backup quarterback to have on the roster. And with the cap space I had, I decided that I'd rather put the larger investment into getting Kendrick Bourne. This was actually like five million dollars and that brought us down to near nothing. So I went that route over backup quarterback, I'll probably always make that move. Jeremiah Bradham, 3.8 a carry here in the preseason, I'm hoping that he is ready to take over this backfield in a big way this year. 
Chad Briggs leads us in receiving 217 yards and a touchdown. Can't wait to see how he and ETN play this year. Four sacks allowed, two for Max Sharping, who is now a backup. And for the defense, 23 tackles for Zach Cunningham. A few sacks. How many will we get without J.J. Watt? And then three INTs. This is going to be a pretty big year for us. They're all big years, though. I just want to see how we can play changing up the offense a little bit and how Watson performs. I think that last year's offense, you know, wasn't really what I wanted. Just having deep threats and this vertical passing game with limited variety. So I'm really excited to see what we can do this year with what I think will be a more efficient offense with a great quarterback. Of course, hoping the defense can step up and with Max Ridley, I really want to make his skill set a bit more balanced now in year two. First year we went all the way with the pass rushing, speed rusher. Now we're going to try to make up the difference with the run stopping. Ross Blacklock, let's go pass rush here. We certainly need to make up for the loss of J.J. Watt. And there's also going to be Charles Omenahu. We'll go speed rusher here. A little more balance with this upgrade. Plus three is nice. We will be releasing Dexter Williams. We're going to be developing all of these rookie running backs. And hopefully we can have success with Bradham again. I do not remember signing a Fadi Odenabo. I definitely didn't, but... I wouldn't mind having him on the team. He does have that well-rounded skill set here. Wouldn't be the worst depth to have on the team. But did the CPU make a signing for me? When did that even happen? Is it possible I signed him by accident or something? Like, the game shouldn't be signing anybody for me. But, oh well. Avadio Denebo, welcome to the Texans. I just realized we open our season against Cleveland. Oh no, not again. We did not play well against them the first time around. That was just a complete annihilation of this entire team. And now we meet them to start off the new season. But hey, we've made some changes to the offense. Hopefully we can play much better than we did in that first matchup. Thankfully, no injuries going into the new season. Alex Anzalone out for the Browns. Set the season goal. All right, where are we going this year? Make the playoffs. I don't know if that's going to happen. I just think there's a lot of unknown with this season. I'll set it here at 7. But I think that we could have a record similar to last year. But we could come away thinking we're a better team than last year, if that makes sense. Although the year might not start off that well because get ready for Miles Garrett, get ready for Nick Chubb. This is going to be... Oh no, Kansas City's in week two! Who put them on the schedule? We don't need that. Must be what we get for getting first place last year. Get destroyed in the wild card round, pick in the 20s and face the Chiefs. This is going to be an awesome start to the year. Upgrading Al Dillard. Let's get that medium accuracy up a little bit, hopefully. One at a time. And number one corner, Bradley Roby. Let's go man to man. 81 overall. Roby, a very key player for our defense. Really liked him last season in coverage. So this is it everybody, 2022 getting underway, starting to really make this team my own. We've made some key changes at key positions, we're changing the offense a little bit. How does this season begin? Oh well, that's a nice scene there showing off the stadium. Browns and the Texans. At least our expectations are so low. We're bound to do a little bit better than last season. I want to see improvement out of this team. 8-8 eight and eight last year. I think that it's going to be difficult, honestly, to increase our win total. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. I never underestimate a team with a great quarterback. 
Happy New Year, everybody. We get to face the Cleveland Browns, who are apparently unstoppable in Madden 21. First and 10. Here comes Odell Beckham Jr. as they fake it his way, and Chubb is taken down after a gain of three by Lonnie Johnson. Back to throw now on second down. That is not Baker Mayfield. That is going out of bounds. Their quarterback now, L. Stewart. We'll have to check out who the quarterback is here in a moment as we send pressure. Stewart heaves it downfield and he missed, overthrowing Kareem Hunt. So the Browns' new quarterback is Logan Stewart. They start over again with the 64 overall rookie. They have two! What is this team doing? Are they still going to be OP in the simulating? What is going on in Cleveland? Okay, these ratings for a 64 overall could be worse. I'm guessing, like, some of these other secondary ratings are going to be awful. What's awareness at here? It is in the 60s. Okay, this just became an opportunity. We need to win this game. Well, here comes the offense now, and I'm hoping that we see a difference with the play calling. Less vertical shots, less hits on Deshaun Watson, less interceptions. That's the plan anyway. Of course, it was in my last Broncos season, and I've thrown a million interceptions in that. But Deshaun Watson is not being controlled by me. He hands this off, and this is Jeremiah Bradham coming off a great rookie campaign. I am very worried about him potentially getting hurt this year because running backs get hurt in Madden all the time. We don't really have a great uh, deep running back group, but Bradham will get all the opportunities he can handle, and that should be close to a first down. You know I love that play-action play right there, so that's in the playbook for sure in a few different situations. First and ten now, a little play fake from Watson. Letting it develop, firing downfield, and that's wide open! Kendrick Bourne's first catch as a Houston Texan. Bourne wears number 84. He'll get the starting slot reps. Jeremiah Bradham now has it stripped. He regains the football, and did he gain two yards? Sure did. All right, back to throw now. Screen for Bradham on the outside, and up to the 27-yard line. It's third down and short. Let's keep this going here. Bradham! Why can't you rotate in someone there that can actually break the tackle in that spot? I mean, his stamina was already hurting there, so... I didn't expect him to, whoa, five yards first down. I forgot. I got to sim through these field goals. But I was not expecting him to get yards after contact on that play. Watson again for Bradham. We got to get someone else the football here. I'm calling it right here. We're making a move at running back. Every time I exit simming, I risk, like, not being able to get back in, but... Gotta make some moves there. Can't see Bradham get hurt because we just keep giving them the football. That is nearly picked off. First incompletion for Watson. So Enrique Freeman is in the backfield. It is third down and 12. And Deshaun Watson's protected. That's Bourne, shy of the sticks. So a solid start. We get a stop, we get down the field. And now Kaimi Fairbairn, 32-yard kick. It's good. Cleveland, second drive underway at the 25-yard line. And here is the rookie back to throw. Logan Stewart off the mark again. Accuracy already an issue for the rookie making his debut. Now he fakes to Nick Chubb. Fires downfield. Odell Beckham is there. 24 yards. First down. On the outside now. Chubb shoved out by Zach Cunningham. And I'm surprised we haven't seen more of Nick Chubb here early on. 
Chubb into two defenders, Reed and Cunningham. So, three carries, not much there for Nick Chubb. That brings up a third down now. Stewart downfield, he's picked off, not even close. And Charvarius Ward has our first takeaway of the season. I don't even know what happened on that play. He threw it somewhere, Beckham was somewhere else. Houston football now, fake it to Bourne, and Bradham is back in the game, getting stuffed on first down. We go empty now on second and nine to the outside, and caught. There is Brandon Cooks. I still think he'll get some deep opportunities this year, but I'm hoping that Overall, we get more underneath. Third down here? That's why I bring in Kendrick Bourne. I need someone to reliably make that catch along the sideline to extend our drive. Kendrick Bourne is that player. And now Bradham, nowhere on first down. Pressure on the way now, and it's dumped off again. Bradham on the outside. By the looks of things, he's going to have a lot of catches in this offense. And I just noticed, like, I've seen this before, but whoever's working the sticks there at the bottom, he, uh, is a down ahead. So it's like, it said fourth down there. That tricked me earlier in, the uh, in episode sometime. By the way, nice catch by Brandon Cooks. I'm sure you'd rather me talk about that than the irrelevant information I just gave you. But we are now at the 37. Bradham with a bit more room. Not much. You'll see more of this too. I put in a lot of offset pistol stuff. And I'm hoping to see Watson run a lot of those. But they seem to be keying on him as much as possible. And now Logan Stewart trying to talk to Nick Chubb. At least he's not down about his first NFL interception. He's ready to go for drive number three. But this is third down and four now. Texans driving. Here is Watson. And on the outside, it's caught. And there is a first down to Quincy Etienne. By the way, Titus Howard doing a pretty good job against Miles Garrett. And now he's about to allow a sack. Or not. Nice job. Bradham to the 17. Another one on the ground, and Bradham is inside the 15-yard line. He has a first down. We got to get some of these other running backs some touches soon, though, because I think that Bradham's already up to 14 or 15. Quick throw now. Caught inside the 10, and that's Zach Ertz down to the 4-yard line. So already, you're seeing a difference in the passing game. Very efficient, very short. And now trying to get our first touchdown of the year. It is going to be... Touchdown, Jeremiah Bradham! Nice job! Fighting all the way to the end zone. That's a two-score lead for the Houston Texans. I have to say I am impressed so far with this team. Two drives in on each side of the football. Let's see if that continues now. The Browns offense has struggled to move the football. They do not get a first down here, and we quickly take over. Now, I've taken Bradham out of the game for the meantime because we really need to not get him to 40 carries today. But we don't go anywhere on that drive. Back to Cleveland, starting to get something. They get a couple first downs, then Landry for 14. Getting into long distance field goal range, 22 to Landry. 8 to Kareem Hunt, and they get an Andy Janovich touchdown. So Cleveland is on the board. Back to the Texans. 26 to ETN. 24 to Enrique Freeman. Young players stepping up. First and 10. Now third and 6. Touchdown, Brandon Cooks. I like this so far. Let's see if we hold this two-score lead into the second half. Oh, that's a huge penalty by Fletcher. Aquara gives us a sack on defense. But then, Logan Stewart to Donovan Peoples-Jones. And now it's a field goal ball game. 
On to the second half now. We'll do a little bit more simulating. Looks like Watson putting up some really good production today. We are inside the 20. Go for it. And we will, on third and 10, be stopped. And now go up six. I'm really impressed with our run defense today. Loss of six on that drive overall for Chubb. All right, I have Freeman in the game right now. We have been pretty pass heavy today, and I'll have to adjust the like, game plan for run pass splits that I'm looking for. But Watson is on target again for Kendrick Bourne. Freeman's still in the game. Want to make sure that Bradham's touches don't get too high too quickly. I want him back in for the fourth quarter. So Freeman up the middle here, down to the 38. Third down and short now, and that's going to be a first down. I kept Bradham in as the ball comes out. He is the power back. So he will get those opportunities, but now has fumbled for the second time if it stands. That was just so close, I'm not sure. But I think he might have been down. I don't know, because the animation was like a strip. Okay, booth review. Good call. We keep possession with the first down. And now Freeman back in the game on first and 10 from the 42. And he gets this one up the right side. Nice run. Watson back to pass on second down. Cut on the outside by Quincy Etienne. And that is up against Denzel Ward. Not easy. Play fake. Watson over the middle. Cut by Kendrick Bourne. I'm liking his debut a lot. These aren't easy plays. And now we go pistol on first down. And this should be a motion drag route for Cooks. It is. And pressure forces Watson back. That was almost like a 20-yard loss. Somehow got that away. Second down now. Watson just throwing that one away. Nothing there. Trying to increase this lead now. Third down and 10. Here comes Garrett. Watson over the middle. Bourne first down. Kendrick Bourne playing more of a role than I think any of us expected. Seven catches, 86 yards today. Quincy Etienne, top of your screen. And now Freeman inside the five, and the rookie's down to the two-yard line. The offense is just clicking. And now if the game plan wants to work well here, I hope we see a Watson keeper. For now, though, a run. That goes nowhere. We're still stuck in this I formation. No Watson runs from this. Second down. And again, stuffed. Born slot left on third and goal. The back is Enrique Freeman. And Watson over the middle. He dropped it. No. I thought maybe it was like that quick catch and drop. No, he literally dropped the touchdown. That was Kendrick Bourne. Oh, man. That's the play he doesn't make. The easy one. The easy touchdown. Well, now we're up by nine. So what I'm doing to make sure that the glitch doesn't happen where I'm kind of stuck in Super Sim, can't pause, make substitutions, is I'm just letting it play out. It has problems when I manually try to exit Super Sim, which I'm not doing right now. I have it set to change a possession, get me back to the menu, and here we are, so I can make adjustments as needed. And I will go back to third down back being Bradham. But I think I'm going to keep Freeman here as, uh, no, I'll go Bradham here too. In the base, we should see Charles Omenahu get some snaps now. I substituted him 
But now giving the double A gap look, and they run it with Chubb. He breaks the tackle, bouncing right off Cunningham. He's only at 19 yards, though. That's eight rushes. And they have tried to be balanced. They just can't move the ball well. They've passed better. Chubb. Not a ton. And now we're on to the fourth. Logan Stewart in his debut with the Browns down nine. Oh, he's hit! And the pass is caught! No! Odell Beckham! Unbelievable! How did he do that? I gotta get out of the simulating here to see that replay. That shouldn't have happened. He was supposed to throw it way further down the field. He gets hit by a Quora and then bailed out with Beckham coming back for it. I can't believe he caught that football. Blitz on the way, knocked back into the face of Stewart. Nice play. Third down and seven now, we're showing pressure and we drop out of it, we were bluffing. Stewart, almost intercepted and almost caught too. Kind of a bang bang play there. So Cleveland trying to cut this to a one score game again. It's a long field goal attempt, this one isn't easy. But it is good. Houston takes over now. Ten minutes to go in the bowl game. That's a fake to Bradham. And Watson now dumping it off for a short gain. Watson's numbers are about what I expected with the changes to the offense. They're less flashy, but they're efficient. On the outside now, Bradham taken down. He just can't get going today against this defense. Third down now for Houston. Got to pick up five. Watson with a laser. And Ertz is right there. I think they'll mark him short, and they do. The Browns take over now. They're only down six. Logan Stewart trying to continue the comeback. We're having issues getting pressure. Now he takes a shot into coverage, and it's nearly picked by Roby. And that was intended for Beckham. I was not comfortable with that play. Play fake. Pressure. Down he goes, and the ball goes to Houston. I don't know who knocked it out, but we had two defenders in the backfield, and we take over. Lonnie Johnson. Could get the credit there. I think it might go to McKinney. Let's go back up by two scores now. Houston in the red zone. Watson on the outside. It's Kendrick Bourne. Bradham up the middle. Inside the five. And there is an injury now. No, Kalecchi Osemele reaching at his knee. Let's see what they give us here. He's not going to the locker room. That is a good sign. But now Max Sharping in the game. We need two more critical yards. Watson, first and goal. Fullback dive. Can't get there. Where's the pistol stuff I put in the playbook here? Second down. Try it again. Touchdown. Cullen. Gillespie! The Houston Texans are back up by two scores, and they have played a great game on offense today. This is exactly what I wanted them to play like. Two point try failed, and now Cleveland is down by 12. They are getting desperate with six minutes to go. Logan Stewart letting it develop and dumping off now to Austin Hooper. Third down and two. Stewart from the pocket. Gets it away. And Roby is there again. I like Bradley Roby a lot. Fourth down now. Trying to seal the deal. Let's do it. This is Stewart. Back to pass. Over the middle. And knocked away by Zach Cunningham. 
We are spoiling the rookie's debut and just playing an outstanding game on both sides of the football. Gotta be proud of this team. I thought we were going to get destroyed today. Watson just dumps this off. No, got to stay in bounds. Uh-oh, pressure's there. Is that going to be intentional grounding on the CPU? I don't think that exists. No. Roughing the passer. We're not really doing much on this possession, but Watson had it right there for Ertz. Tight coverage, though, from Grant Delpit, so incomplete. Kaimi Fairbairn makes this a 32-17 to 17 point game. We are almost done here. Four minutes to go. Stewart hit again and got away from the sack. There are a lot of uh, would-be sacks in other games here, but they're able to throw out of them. Stewart second and ten. Wide open is Hooper across the 40. Four-man rush. Here comes the pressure. Downfield. Stewart. Oh, my. It's caught. Jarvis Landry this time. Absolute bailout catches from him and Odell Beckham today. Now Stewart on first and 10, fires across the middle, Beckham inside the 10, down inside the 5. They're making it interesting. Two for two in the red zone now. This is key. Stewart on first down, a little screen here. Oh, what a hit by McKinney! Third and goal now. Stewart needs a touchdown. There is a penalty marker and incomplete. Intended for Donovan Peoples-Jones. Decline the penalty. Or there is an argument, I think, for accepting. Would you rather them have one shot from the 5 or two from the 15? I'd probably take the two unless it were like an elite quarterback. Back of the end zone now! Intercepted by Roby! Let's go! What a great game by this defense today. Both sides of the football have really impressed me. Let's see if we can sim this one to the end. And we'll be close. Browns will get the football one more time. Jabari Carr gets the first sack of his career. It looks like this one is all wrapped up, everybody. A 1-0 start that I didn't see coming. We played a great complete game today, and that is how this season begins. 32-17. I would have liked to see us run the football more and better in this game, but for a high-volume passing attack today... I liked what I saw from the offense. Maybe I'd like a couple more vertical plays in there. We did throw the ball short quite a bit. I didn't think my changes would make that much of a difference, but I liked it overall. 45 attempts, 273. The numbers are not going to wow you, and his longest was only 26 yards. We didn't run the football spectacularly. We weren't awful either. Freeman was pretty efficient. Bradham just three a carry. But Kendrick Bourne, very impressed by his debut. ETN made some plays. There's not really many negative takeaways. Maybe you would have liked to have some more pressure overall. But, very good game. And we shut down Nick Chubb today. I mean, I thought, you know, 100 yards was going to be pretty easy. We also held our own against Miles Garrett. There wasn't a single sack of Deshaun Watson. No interceptions either. How did we play so well? Let me know in the comments section what you think, and maybe we should watch week two. How do we play against Kansas City? Does anybody want to watch that game and then sim to our bye week? Let me know down below. I want to see your feedback on this one. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the Houston Texans franchise rebuild, and we'll continue this season shortly. Have a great day, everybody. Enjoy your weekend.